Let me get to Representative Weiner here. Uh, he's from New York, and he's been kicking ass lately in the House, right? And, I, you know, a star is born. I don't know if that's too strong a word here, but I, I love his um, arguments, basically, uh, where he comes out and explains why the Republicans are so damn wrong. Now, in this case, he took it to another level. He's like, look, I got a bill you guys can vote for. It's going to be great for you. Trust me. Let's let him explain. The gentleman from New York is recognized to offer his amendment. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. This, this amendment uh, seeks to clarify one of the great enduring mysteries of the debate about health care, and that is where my Republican friends stand on the issue of government-run health care. Now, on one level, it's very clear, quotes throughout the debate have seemed to imply that they're against it. Mr. Stearns of Florida said, if the government runs it, it will be bureaucratic and efficient. Many cases will not cover the people who want it. Mr. Terry of Nebraska. Government and health care lead to rationing, eliminate the sacred doctor-patient relationship. Mr. Blunt said on health care reform, the marketplace is the only known mechanism available to deliver what people want. Now, I raise this subject because today is the 44th anniversary of President Johnson signing the Medicare Act into law. Now, the Medicare Act, as all of my colleagues know, is not only government-run health care, but it's remarkably good government-run health care. Now, I was criticized earlier for having shoddy charts, so I got a little fancy. On this chart, you see that not only is Medicare uh, public, uh, uh, public health care, but also we have DOD, Veterans Affairs, and Indian Health Service. Now, this is not only government-run health care, but it's remarkably efficient. 3% overhead in Medicare, compared to about 30% in the combination of overhead and profits by the health insurance company. Remarkable satisfaction on the part of the contractors in the last national scoring that they did of the contractors. It got a 4.1 on a six-point scale. And frankly, we know it works. We know that when Medicare, before Medicaid was passed, we had a poverty rate of seniors of about 30%. Now it's about 10%. We know also that the private insurance companies take about $600 billion a year and put it in their pockets, not into health care. Now, some people have held up this, this chart, this Byzantine chart, um, that talks about how they think the bill works. Well, I've got my own chart. This is Medicare. Three bucks. The patients the doctors, and the one single payer. So this amendment is simple. It gives my Republican friends the chance they've been waiting for to vote against government-sponsored, government-run, government-administered health care. It's your dream amendment. Unless, of course, you're going to continue to do this civil impression when it comes to, to Medicare. First you like it. Then you don't like it. Then you like it. Then you, you, you run against it. The fact of the matter is that Medicare is a pretty darn good model of what a public plan might look like. Now, it's not perfect. There are reimbursement rates in some cases I think need to be higher. I think we incentivize too much to go into hospitals and not enough on the other side. Some of the things that are being done in this bill. But this is your opportunity, once and for all with my amendment, to vote to eliminate the Medicare Act. Once and for all, stamp out the scourge of public government-run government-administered, single-payer health care. This is your chance. And you know what? For all of the talk about how much you hate such programs, I think you'd welcome this opportunity. Now, I'm going to vote no, and I'll tell you why. Because I think the Medicare program works pretty darn well. I think it's administered in efficiently. I think that you ask seniors, if you tell someone tomorrow who's 55 years old you're going to get uh, Medicare, that we're going to start covering people 55 to 65, and then maybe 45, and then 35, and who knows, maybe Medicare for everyone, you'd have a lot of people who would be pretty happy. There have been a lot of elements of this debate that have been hard to follow. I admit that. But one of the hardest has been the utter hypocrisy and contradiction inherent in the arguments of many of my friends on the other side. This is put up or shut up time. If you don't like national health care, if you don't like government-run health care, this is your amendment. I dare you. I double dare you. Vote yes on this. 
and then go home and explain to your constituents how you're so philosophically opposed to publicly funded health care that you voted to eliminate Medicare on its 44th anniversary. Ah, booyah, man. That was excellent work by Congressman Weider. Who doesn't love the double there? Who doesn't love that? He said, no, no, but no, no, you're right. No, government health care is terrible. Go ahead, vote against it. Nobody, it's an actual bill. Go ahead, vote against it. Oh, you're not. That's interesting. Well, it's because it turns out government health care kind of works, right? And it's enormously popular, right? And another great point he made in there. He's like, if it works so well for people over 65, why not for people at 55 or 45 or 35? Put some thought behind it, <laughs> okay? A and look, put up or shut up time, okay? If you're really against it, here's your golden opportunity. Man, that was excellent job. It really was. I'm very proud of him. I like how I get proud of the congressman. <laughs> and plus, on top of all that, did you know he's the guy that's engaged to Huma Abedin, uh, Hillary Clinton's you know, former uh, assistant. And I, I don't know if she's still the assistant, uh, who's gorgeous and on my top 10 hottest women list. Okay, I mean, look at this, Kaiser Wiener on top of the world. Okay, kicking ass and taking names. And apparently taking hot wives as well. So, uh, uh, no, I love that. And I'm curious as to how the Republicans voted on it. Because you remember Orrin Hatch yesterday when Bernie Sanders cornered him with the same uh, argument. He's like, oh, no, 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 I'm not saying take away Medicare. I didn't say that. Did. Everybody got that. I didn't say that, right? Because government-run Medicare kicks ass. Uh, but the government-run anything else in healthcare wouldn't work at all. Really? Why? Okay, now, here's another great story out of Paul Krugman's uh, editorial today on this. Uh, R Representative Bob Inglis is a Republican from South Carolina. He's at a town hall meeting, and I didn't know this until I read Krugman's article on it. He's at a town hall meeting at, at one of the guys in South Carolina. He's one of his, uh, you know, um, constituents gets up and says, Hey, listen, you got to know, you got to make sure that the government keeps its hands off my Medicare. No, wait a minute. Medicare is a government-run program. Do you get the wonderful richness of that? I mean, the, he, the guy loves Medicare. It's run by the government. But he's so bought into the right-wing ideology that everything government does is wrong, that he's like, oh, make sure you keep the government hands off of Medicare. <laughs> Give him a bit of a thick South Carolina <laughs> accent. And then the funny thing is Congressman Inglis is like, you know, I, I hate to do this to you, but... Medicare is government run. He's like, what? Well, all right, I'm not buying it, okay? Just make sure the government doesn't get involved in Medicare. Krugman then uses that as a, tar as a jumping off point to explain how the government is involved in every part of health care. For example, did you know not just Medicare, which is, works well, and not just for veterans, which, of course, you couldn't take away from veterans if you tried. Trust me. Okay, give it a shot, just like Congressman Wiener says. See how that works out for you. Nobody's going to take away the veterans. Uh, government-run health care system, right? So now, but the other parts of it are also true. It's interesting. Now, if you get your, a lot of people are satisfied with their private insurance because they get it from their employer. But the employers are required by law, okay, that they cannot exclude people with a pre-existing condition. So if you're buying uh, insurance uh, on your own, they can exclude you for a pre-existing condition and that people hate that, right? But if you're buying it through uh, the employers, now why does the government uh, allowed to do that because the government's giving the employers a tax break. Remember that? They're saying, hey, look, if you provide health care for your employers, we're going to give you a little bit of a subsidy here, a tax break. But if you want the tax break, you can't exclude people with pre existing conditions. See, that's the government getting involved. And guess what happens? People like that. That's the government getting involved to give them a tax break. People like that. And he goes on and gives several different examples of that. So when the Republicans try to scare you and say, oh, you know what, those nameless, faceless bureaucrat government getting involved in Medicare, uh, medical care in this country. They don't know what they're talking about. Government is intimately involved at every level already. And when you ask people, do you like the way that government is involved in that specific program, they almost always say, hell yes. So put some thought behind it. Don't let them scare you like that.